Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Market Session Recap of 3rd of March 2014. Today, we are going to take a look at four pairs, and I have prepared some setups for you on these pairs. Euro, dollar, then cable, then Aussie, then Aussie, and then caddy, or dollar cat. Currently, uh, the market is being influenced by uh, uh, USA and Russian, uh, well, I can say dispute about Ukraine so we are really having a very very slow market and if you see it was really if you've been watching market today and maybe trading some of those setups the market has been really slow and that may affect our well I can say it affects the whole world but mostly it will affect our dollar currency pairs so we will take a look at these possible setups but as always try to manage your trades accordingly. Uh, of course, prior to we begin, as always, we need to mention our risk disclaimer, that online educational materials are developed by Edinburgh Market Sales Estonia for a global audience. Therefore, please take into consideration that information this session may not be suitable for everyone. To get a corresponding information on charting conditions and any other detail, please visit www.admiralmarketsglobal.com, select your country of residence and contact an appropriate entity. Risk disclosure statement, uh, they explain all the possi all possible risks associated with Forex market and by accepting those uh, risk disclaimer things, you are accepting to go further with me. Also, Admiral Markets UK LTD takes no responsibility for the information accuracy. The analysis represents the personal opinion of the author, me, and in no way it represents the actual suggestion for the trade. These are not aim UK's opinions, the website in the video is not the .co.uk website, but the globaluse.com website. Forex is risky business, and this should be not taken as advice, it's personal opinion. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. So having said that, we are free to go, and I want to, I want to show you, uh, yeah, good evening everyone who join up uh, now. Uh, I want to show you last uh, recap, and last recap I need to tell it was up. I'm speaking in my in my uh, uh, case. It's 75 pips from the last recap. I will show you trades, and this is what we had seen on last recap. Well, uh, for me, I'm saying some of you may have totally different results. Some of you may have, I don't know. Uh, very, it, it was very, very, how can I say, uh, whipsaw in one and in the, in the other direction, and the, the results may differ, but me, my results, as I said, in my, in my uh, scrapbook, it was like this, GBP cat, it was unfortunately, it was minus 50 stop loss hit, even though it was in profit pro, for plus 25 pips initially, but, uh, well, I didn't, I didn't uh, close the trade, and it was basically minus 50 stop loss hit. Euro dollar hit 37.63 initially plus 23 total, and I got all of these uh, pips because I was I was also if you follow my blog on Admiral Markets and Forex Factory Spiders, then you could have seen that basically what I did I managed the trade live. So I told you close it now, close it then. I tried to manage it live. It was written on my blog and on Spiders then. Also, Australian dollar, it was plus 20. Basically, we had multiple rejections of the level, which I mentioned, it was 90.20. And I, I was also managed that trade live. GBP dollar, well, it was basically, this level was hit. But after that level, the price went 15 pips close to stop loss, but it didn't hit stop loss. And after that, it it dropped 50 pips, but I was also trading there live, and I, I, I was telling you to close it when it was plus 30. So plus 30 after a drop was 67.95 for those who entered at this level. For those who entered slightly lower, it was somewhere in between 15 and 30 pips. GBPN was the best trade, giving plus, 50, plus 55 pips total, and total it was 75 pip potential. 
So I'm not saying that it was for me 75 p potential. Uh, for some of you it may be different, but because I manage the trade live on Spiders Den and Admiral Marcus blog, even on my Facebook page, I think this this should be the the maximum number of pips probably, which could have which could have uh, been. Uh, Oh, sorry, I, I'm also watching other trade which I have currently. So it was 75 pip overall potential of the maximum pip size. So some of you may have plus 5, some of you may have plus 20, some of you may have plus 50. Well, this was, I got total around, around, I think it was 50 pip out of this potential of 75 pip. Well, well, basically, that was pretty good considering how whipsaw the market was at that particular time. So, today, uh, we are going to see what I have in mind for you. And also, I have prepared, if you were following me, Spiders then, you were seeing some set of setups which I posted today. So, this was... Euro dollar setup for today, which basically, what can I say about Euro dollar? One of the stupidest pair, most stupid pair today. It, to be honest, I don't know if anyone traded this. This is nonsense pair, really, today. Most of them were nonsense pairs, but uh, even GBP Suisse didn't manage to get at this level. I, I'm really watching this level. Aussie, it was, uh, and it still is uh, good for scalping because we can see and we could have seen some uh, nice uh, rejections out of 89, 25, 89, 30, especially that initial reaction, but it still needs to be, to be, it still needs to be developed because I don't see, the market is really, really slow now. And uh, we will see what, what can happen. Uh, well, I, I see a message from Trader Carlis. He said, I traded. Yeah, good, okay, if you traded. But, you know, uh, I don't like when, when those things happen. I was right about this, this, this one. As you can see, what I was right and what I wrote is, uh, take long here at this point and I was right but I didn't trade it really just because it was very slow I was watching a price action in Asia and I saw that basically it was 20 pip in Asia it was 85.65 and then uh, price went to 92 and then it dropped to I don't know 60 something then it, it jumped it was basically nothing yeah and the situation is re in Ukraine is really really Bad, and I, I, I really hope that the situation will be solved anytime soon because of the many people who are living there and some friends, families who live there and who have been living there for all these years. And I hope that situation will be solved. Considering forex market, of course, it affects Russian rubble, rublia, we call it, and also it affects US dollar. And probably the market is waiting for a resolution which will help both parties to find a, a mutual solution is in that particular dispute. So we need to wait, guys. I cannot move a market myself and neither of you can. So we just need to be patient and I hope that those setups will come in play. So for, uh, yeah, I can also show uh, what those trades were. If you don't mind, I can show you. This was Euro dollar. You can see position by around 37.20 and uh, 36.85 targeting 37.80. What happened was basically, basically, a situation in in euro dollar after our web webinar it went you could have bought it here but at the time of our webinar but 
it won't be too close to 37.15 until if you or if you maybe entered immediately but this was this was the time of the entry and you can see that euro went to 37.15 perfectly to the pip and jumps subsequently some 40 points to the upside so this was euro dollar trade it didn't get to 37.80 it went to 37.40 subsequently it hit 37.85 but at the time of our webinar and a day after it hit this level and I wrote that I I was managing the trade live so you probably saw it GBP this was the entry and this almost hit our stop loss which was hit but then subsequently it was a drop and it dropped even further but I closed it because I had an entry here I really closed it I wanted to close it how can I say a little bit maybe early but well who knows what could have happened you can see that the pound went down subsequently but initial reaction was a bit of a pullback from our entry point that is why I told you to close at plus 30 okay OC OC it was basically what I was paying attention to 90 20 possible retest buy trade 90 20 90 20 it was this this also was buy retest buy retest multiple buy retest trades of the 90 10 and overall for me it was 20 pips maybe some of you went 40 pips because it was multiple rejections of 90 20 but for me it was oh, I also traded live managing the trade live so basically I was I was managing also the trade for you if you watch it so those were free pips and signals for from me and uh, then we had GBPN GBPN the best trade well I was telling you to buy if it goes close to 170.55 this was the time of our webinar it went close one time second time overall it went two times for 40 50 pips and I got 55 pips from it you see buy at the breakout of this level buy buy two two possible trades so both of them were profitable and total of 55 pips on my side okay then let's see GBP cat initially it was good this was the time of webinar and I told you to sell this was where the price so was sold initially it was good for 30 pips even more 30 pips 33 pips but I didn't manage it because I was out of my station and I basically entered there at a third chance fourth chance and of course that was probable probable loss it went at my side it went minus 50 pips but may some of you may or had some profits if you enter here 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 or here you could have made some profits unfortunately I entered too late but nonetheless it was 75 I took some 55 pips out of that all of those setups so I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that I really don't have anything against it pip is a pip even if you make one pip you are profitable so 55 pips out of 75 pip potential it's it's a good thing believe me guys okay now what can we say about our next setups euro dollar same thing for me position by around 37 50 60 stops 30 pips target price around 38 95 guys if this level breaks I need to add if 37 50 breaks breaks to the downside to the downside 37 30 and 36 
75 can be targets. So play could be targets. So pay attention also to that number. 3750 is important number. And as we could see, 3750 was indeed a good level to long into all day long. But you know what usually happens. It can be good for one day, then it can reverse. So try to pay attention to that level particularly. Okay? If that breaks to the downside, we have a trend line here. You can see the trend line. If it breaks to the downside, watch these levels. 37 and also 37, 36, 75. This level. Okay? So, now it's a politically driven pair, Euro-Dollar, okay, so because of situation in Ukraine. So, if you trade a, a politically unstable environment, go with low risk. That way, you will, you will save your account. Go with low risk, guys. So, this is what I see on Euro long around these levels but pay attention to this possible breakout of 3750 okay you need to pay attention to those also but stops could be placed a little bit below 3730 so anyway it would have been a low risk trade if you trade this 30 pips loss stop loss or 25 pips it isn't much, so it can give us a nice trade. Now, if some weird thing happened and, I don't know, Euro jumps a lot to 38.75, we, I think that, that that is a level, if it drops there, that is a level for a nice, for a nice short opportunity. Here, around 38.70.75, nice shorting opportunity if it some if something happens and it drops there so also pay attention to those levels okay clear trend line and zigzag what is zigzag it's a trend one swing second swing so the first swing was captured here the second swing was captured here so it's called zigzag. This is zigzag. So we can say that we have a trend on this pair, okay? We have a trend on this pair. Okay? Now let's move to cable and see what we basically have on cable. Also uptrend. Now from my perspective, I can see a buy position around 66, 90, 67, 50 pip stop targeting 68 to 68, 20. Also, sell around 67, 70 if the price gets there first with 20 pip trailing stop. So it depends which level will be hit first. But so far, for me, this is a buy setup on cable. Why am I seeing that because of this? Triangle, then uptrend. This is uptrend now. It's a bit of, it's a little retracement. And I'm saying again, it's because of situation in Ukraine. But look at this. Swing, not a full swing. But this can be also counted as a swing. We have a trend line here. Capturing effectively three touches, but that is two line capture, two, two uh, point trend line. We can count this setup, this point, and this point. So I can, I think this could be a buy setup now. On cable, and this should proceed higher, in my opinion. I would enter sell only if it goes around this level.
Aussie. 89.25 again, or this is a little bit better. Uh, 89.50. By the time, at the time I was uh, writing this uh, webinar, Aussie was uh, really struggling to break this level. And basically, it was rejected first time at this level. You see, the, I need some time to write this info for you. But at the time I was writing this, I also took some Aussie and I was stopped at break even. But initially, it fell 18 pips. Now, I, I, I think this is better level, a better level for shorting. We have a double confluence and we also have a channel. We also have a channel here, guys, if you see. We can move this. Doesn't matter, but it's still a channel. So if you put it like this, you can see that the price got back inside the channel. But the more important for me is this area here, this upper trend line here. More important than this lower trend line. This 61.8 at 38.2 confluence is basically standing at the upper side of this trend line, which is captured. One, two, three, four points. Tom DeMarc said if the trend line has three points, it means that it has been confirmed. We start drawing trend line by two points. Three points confirm the trend line. Now it's a four point here. And what we what we know about this is I really can go long. Maybe I'm wrong about this, but this level here, you see now it's struggling to break 50. But this level especially is great. I would play stops above this level. Almost at 88.6, 89.75. So if it gets here, even it, it, it is not bad uh, how I usually do it. If, if my risk is 0 0.4, I would enter here with 0 0.2 and maybe I will add here 0 0.2. I always calculate my risk according to stop loss. If 50 pip stop loss is for this trade initially, because I I put stop loss at 89.75. If I enter at 89.25, it's 50 pip stop loss. 50 pip stop loss, let's say hypothetically, gives me if I want to take 2% of a risk, 0 0.4 maximum trade. Then I would divide here and I would divide here. 0 0.2, 0 0.2. I'm calling that, you remember the webinar, I'm calling that scaling into retracement. And so far it's been very effective. I didn't always use that technique, but in couple, I don't know, from inception of my Camarilla, I, I've been doing that constantly. So all my trades are based on a stop loss. Entry position and a stop loss. The difference between entry and stop loss gives me a risk. I always want to fit into 2% of a risk. And if my risk is 2%, then I calculate total lot size for that trade. I can also divide. So if it's 0 0.5, I can divide it at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.2. If I have three potential entries, if I have two potential entries, then I can divide it into 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. If it happens to drop from there, I wouldn't have so much potential. But if it happens to, to drop from here and from here to there, I would be in a double profit. Okay? So that is how we do it. Maybe for some of you, probably you do it differently, but my method is that. Okay? Now, what I can say also about this level is that it also can have a little bit of a trend line. It's not so strong trend line, but let's make it like this. If it happens that a pair hits that level, look at this. It will be double point capture. So it will have multiple resistance out there. 
So let's see what will happen. Currently this is retracement, it's W, so if it jumps from there, it can go straight here. So it could it could mean a good entry because stop loss is at 89.75, it's not that big. Alternatively, if it drops to 88.80, we can have a scalp trade. Aussie N, what I can say on Aussie N is we have also retracement confluence. Sell at 91, targeting 90.30, 90.05, 30 pip stop. Or scalp around 90.30 if it drops there first. So how do we take these setups? Whichever comes first, we take it. If it comes first, we take this one. This is the main plan. If it happens, if we see this alternative trade first, then we can take it first. So basically, it's, it's how I can say, whatever hits first. So what is about Aussie N? Aussie N is here, Aussie N, okay? 91, I would like to see it. Now, if it, look at this confluence. If we look at this trend line also, now, at this point, it can make a confluence. So it can also be 9095 according to this scenario. This is also confluence. This is nice trend line. And I would like to see there something around, around 91 and 91. Point thirty should be stop loss, of course. I will reformulate this. This is what I see on OZN. Okay? Trend line here, confluence there, downtrend there. Thirty pin pip stop loss if it happens to get here, it will probably make inverted head and shoulders pattern and go up. No, uh, 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 Nicholas, uh, who, let me see, Adrian, Adrian, this won't break, the, it may break a trend line, but it can close here. You know, when we trade price, let's, let's see this example. For example, you trade the price. I don't trade candlesticks uh, in that classical way. Why? This is explanation for your for your uh, question. Yeah, it may break a trend line here, but it can make a shooting star. So I trade the price. I don't care about uh, whether the candle is leaving or not, because if I want to trade this, I don't care about this candlestick. So if it hits this level, it can hit this level, but also it can close then below this level. So it can make a shooting star. Okay? In that case, Adrian, the price will be hit and the shooting star will close the candle again below this level. So if my plan is correct and if market gives me the opportunity, the candlestick can touch the level but close below it effectively making this spinning top doji candle shooting star pattern spinning top whatever because we trade the price okay that is clear to you we trade the price we don't trade candles yeah if it happens then it will it will hit our stop loss uh, you need to learn to trade with the stop loss if you don't trade with, with, with stop loss, then what, what I can say, you don't trade properly. If it makes breakout, pullback, continuation, then it will hit stop loss. But I don't mind because stop loss is around 30 pips. You need to enter your risk size according to 30 pips stop loss. 
If you trade price, you don't need to see the candle to close the level. Carlis, I will show that in my next webinar about price action. You trade the price, so look, you don't, you don't watch these candlesticks. You, you watch this, where the price is. Let's say, just for example, that I want to sell it now. I don't care, I don't care about this candlestick. This candlestick is bullish. But I don't care, I, I care the price. I only care about the price. So if I say, if I want to take a short at this level, it, it is still a confluence of this trend line. Because the price may hit this level and the candle can close below it. Maybe it won't, maybe it will go to the upside. But from my perspective, we need to, uh, I'm a price action trader. I trade uh, the price. A couple of years ago, before the inception of Camarilla, MACD, I, I traded the candlesticks a lot. And the problem is, if I want to enter here at this point, this candlestick can close here. So I would have 20 pip differential. That is the problem for me nowadays. Because my stops are not that big, but I want to see, I want to sell it higher and I want to buy it lower on this particular intraday trading setup. I don't talk about five minutes scalping. I'm not talking about uh, uh, triangle breakouts on different time frames. I'm talking about pure intraday trading setups, one hour time frame. So I want to see the price hit that level and then rejection of that zone. I don't care whether the price will be a huge Marubozu candle or uh, three white soldiers. I don't, I don't care. If I'm wrong, then I will be stopped out. 30 pip stop is not that big. If you fit into your risk profile. So, the logic behind all of these trades is this. Look at this. We can also think about this. Look at this trend line. Why would I, why don't we risk here? I would probably, and I'm, I'm still waiting for that setup. I wait for, uh, no, no, th this is not a retest, Adrian. Uh, in this, in setups like this, I hit the first hit, I trade the first hit of the level. Of course, now the market is dead. But let's assume that we are in London session. If we were in a London session, I would make, I would probably make a pending order. But I, I don't know what Asia will do now, so you need to pay attention to the market if you want to trade it. Put an alert if you can at this level and see what the price will do around that level. But in my opinion, it gives the potential to hit the level and then go back. Look at this. The price has hit this level, but it went below subsequently. So if you traded the price, you would wait for this level to be hit. You, you wouldn't wait for uh, this candlestick setup. Bearish. This is pure bearish pattern. It's mini head and shoulders here. But also, it has a form of, I can say that this is a form of engulfing pattern. Although this candlestick is not a perfect engulfer, if it, if it had a body to here, to this pattern, it would, call, it would be called engulfing. But this is a spinning top. This is a spinning top touching the trend line, if you want to trade a candlestick. But I wouldn't trade it. I would trade this level or that level here, which subsequently you see how the price dropped. If you want to trade price action, then probably you would wait for this level or this level, this level. You wouldn't wait for the candlestick close because at this level the price would be higher. Now, I know that this is this may sound a, a little bit... Uh, <coughs> Uh, hard for you to, to understand, but that is how the things go. 
you need to be aware of it and you need to trade the price if you are a price action trader. Candlesticks are good for introduction to price action trading but full price action is the best if you trade the price not just candlesticks. Candlesticks help a lot in divergence trading but in price action trading you wait for the price, not the candlestick. Okay? So that is for OZN. I would like to see a hit of that level. Or pay attention to the trend line and see how the price behaves. Yeah, Aussie, if you ask uh, about Aussie trade, now it's very close to, to that level. So the stop would be would be small and it, it's close to 89.50, yeah. Aussie is a very close to its shorting zone. Look at this. So, yeah. This is predetermined level and it's very close to it. Yeah, night one, I, I, I also see a consultation from Dragon that says night one zero is confluence with Marimet line. Excellent, Dragon, yeah. So on Marimet also we have a confluence here. So this is definitely the level to watch, guys. Even if you have a 10, 15 pip winner, it's still a good level to short into. It should provide a nice resistance once it's hit. Okay? And the last one is USD CAD. USD CAD is unfortunately, I should have, I forgot about this uh, because that is the trade I, I follow. And I'm not, uh, you know, I don't have the right to tell you enter now because I would uh, viol I would violate uh, non-disclosure agreement and risk disclosure agreement if I told you enter now. This is the setup what I had in mind and when I said I'm paying attention at my trade at the beginning of the webinar it was this setup. Now we can have a second chance trade because it already pulled back for some it was 15, 20 pip and I, my trailing stop has been hit after some, yeah, 18 pips but look at this, why I took the trade around this level and I'm still paying attention to that confluence zone. This can be also trend line here, although it's a steep but look at this, inner trend line, one, two, three touches, inner trend line and look how many rejections this level has. Particularly 90, uh, sorry, 100 and I don't know how you would call this, I said 1.1098. That is how I say, say it in English. 1.1098. So, this is the plan for for dollar cat. I already I was already in the trade by the time I was writing this webinar and at the time we were having the webinar price went a little bit above this level and now it fell some I think it's now let's see where the price is now it's at 81 so basically some 12 13 pips but look at this, one rejection, second rejection. This level, which I had in mind, particularly, particularly 1.1100, it's very good level to short into. With only 30 pip stop loss. Okay? According to this, we should drop even more 
this is head and shoulders here this is W retracement but it's being rejected of this zone and we can see down so let's see if we get another pullback to this level and then maybe short again okay so I will show you these slides again and if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask me I will gladly respond to your questions this is euro dollar this is GBP dollar this is Aussie this is Aussie and and this is dollar cat euro cable which is indeed in the level to buy into let me see 61.50 level excellent level Aussie <laughs> you see it's been rejected again of this level I cannot tell you directly buy or sell sorry guys uh, I would violate my non-disclosure agreement I risk disclosure so you know what you should do if, if, if our entry price is what is three four five pips I told you about my management if I want to enter here and if I my full risk is 0 0.4 I would enter there at 0 0.2 at somewhere around there at 0 0.2 you need to watch the price sometimes price will come three four five pip close to the level and then it will be rejected so I don't know if you got short trade at 60 46 something somewhere around that well it's close to this point it's close to this point and again these are actual suggestion for the trade and these are not extra suggestion for the trade you need to take this as my opinion and advice I don't know what you will do look at this it has the potential to come here so even though if it hits if it starts to be rejected and it cannot break uh, 90 96 or 5 we still can look for shorting opportunities okay yeah Carlis it's rejected it's rejected uh, exact, exactly Aussie just re retested near point of confluence even though we have a slow market you can see the power of this levels and price action so okay guys th th these are my opinion uh, this is my opinion uh, I don't know what will happen the, the thing is I don't like these political situations uh, forex currency pairs can be strongly influenced with uh, these uh, with these political disputes so you need to t take trades with lower risk of course and of course pay attention to to those levels and we will see we can have some nice setups if trend because most of them are trend trades except for alternative trades they are counter trend if those setups confirm tomorrow of course as always I will come up with new analysis on spiders then and of course on admiral markets and admiral markets global so I also publish Twitter so you can follow me also on Twitter so thank you guys for joining we will see what will happen the market is slow so if you initially are good for 15 20 pips put your stop loss to break even plus 15 and enjoy 15 pips out of slow market if the market gets into the normal trending 
uh, period, then we should have nice pips as we had two weeks ago, 235 pip potential. Thank you for joining. Talk to you very, very soon, guys. Cheers. And, of course, uh, don't forget to sign up. I need to tell you also, don't forget to sign up for special webinars. We'll have price action webinar part three. Also, we will have discretionary trading pros and cons. And of course, I will be talking about this is this is what I really can't wait to show you Renko and Rage Bars part one. So thank you very much and talk to you very, very soon. Cheers.